The Navi Customizer has so many awesome programs and so many mediocre ones, and especially so many traps. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the best Navi Customizer programs and which ones to avoid so that you can build your own Navi Cust. People love to ask me what's my best Navi Customizer, and the truth is it really depends on your build and your strategy. So in making this together, we can uh, make sure to avoid certain pitfalls uh, as we are building our own Navi Customizer. Let's start on a positive note, right? How about S for Super Armor, right? This is gonna be in just about every single Navi Customizer program I think that actually it should just be in all of them it's only four blocks total and it's gonna prevent you from getting flinched which means that you're always being able to charge up your charm shop that's never getting uh, interrupted you're gonna make sure that um, your attacks are not gonna be staggered and stopped a super Vulcan is not gonna hit you freely for all the damage people run uninstalled just to get rid of super armor I mean, think about that for a second. I mean, they also want to get rid of air shoes too, but seriously, super armor, phenomenal. Um, you need a good reason not to run it in your Navi Customizer. Same thing is true for custom one. For only four blocks, you're getting one extra chip in your draw. That might not seem like a lot to a newer player, but believe me, it is super, super impactful. One extra chip uh, can be a very big difference between selecting two or three chips in a round versus selecting less than that. Um, it is extremely, extremely good, especially for the size. Now, custom two, uh, is pretty size efficient, right? If you look at um, the number of blocks it is, we've got seven total, right? So if you did two custom ones, that'd be eight. One custom two is seven, so you do save a block. That being said, I think that it's more in the A tier. Um, we're kind of splitting hairs here between S and A. I think S, every single Navi customizer is pretty much uh, gonna be wanting to run it. Not every single Navi customizer needs custom two, especially um, the size and uh, the sort of shape that you're getting out of it. That being said, custom two is amazing. And don't let me, you know, <laughs> Don't let me think that you're uh, that we're slandering it. So um, next up in A tier, we're gonna get Bug Stop. Same thing. Um, I'm sure you, some people would make an argument that it's S tier, but there are many Navi Customizer programs that don't need Bug Stop. In fact, many of them just want to be bugged in general. We've talked a lot in previous videos about Buster Bugs being helpful. Um, you know, your Color Bugs, your Status Bug being super helpful. So it's not super ubiquitous, but it is very, very good. The really great thing about Bug Stop is the shape of it. It's so easy to throw into the corners of the Navi Customizer. And to be fair, Custom 2 is very similar. You're gonna see that all of these little protrusions are really great because those um, corner spots of the Navi Cust are kind of hard to access normally. Um, but yeah, Bug Stop is great. And Bug Stop is um, also one of the best programs to make sure that um, things like your Rush and your Beats, which are also both in A tier, um, are going to work. And I don't know if you know this or not, but Rush, Beat, and Tango, which spoilers can be in the B tier, <laughs> um, do not work at all if they are bugged. They're the only programs that are like that. They, they just will not work, period. And even using the chip, uh, Bug Fix are not going to work. So Bug Stop is a really great way to make sure that um, Rush, Beat, and Tango are all very good together. Now, you guys uh, are probably pretty familiar with them. Rush is um, a ton of value for only two blocks. It's going to stop your opponent from using their very first invis in a match, and it also leaves them paralyzed. Um, if your opponent forgets about Rush, it can often be a really awkward spot uh, for them. Um, in fact, many players have to play around Rush by making sure they use their first invis at the end of a round, or they have to use it with their first barrier up, which, by the way, is going to be an A tier. Um, Rush is very, very good, um, and don't get me wrong, uh, there are definitely some more impactful things that you can put to the space, but for only two blocks, it's very, very solid. Beat is kind of similar. The very first mega chip or giga chip that the opponent used will get whisked away. Um, I think that Beast is, uh, sorry, Beat is, mo is most effective when the opponent does completely forget about it and you're able to steal away, you know, a hub batch or like a bug death thunder or something. It's pretty, pretty awful. Um, but just like Rush, even the existence of Beat is enough to make your opponent have to play really awkwardly. Even if your opponent knows that they have Beat um, and they, you know, decide to throw away something you know, weaker like a, like an Aquaman or something uh, to make sure their Gigas work, that's still really awkward for them, right? They can't just use their most powerful chips uh, with impunity. It's often enough uh, to really ruin their day. And um, a little fun fact for you, Rush, Beat, and Tango don't get uninstalled. You might think that they would. I would think that they would, certainly, but they don't. So, um, yeah, they're very good. Nice to have around. Um, Tango is the last of these little animal pieces. This one's definitely the worst. Um, he heals you for a good amount and also gives you a barrier 100. The reason why I don't like Tango as much is one, the shape of it is really awkward. Um, it's a lot bigger than, you know, this little Tetra ship here or this two banger right here. It's really awkward. Um, Tango is also not guaranteed to go down in a fight. If your opponent um, uses like a multi-hitting attack to just one shot you go through it, then um, you're never gonna get the actual value of Tango in the match, which can be a little bit awkward. Um, but Tango is still pretty good. Um, if you build around it, 
right? You don't just want to slam it in like an S or an A without thinking about it. You do have to build around Tango. You have to know that this is a strategy you want. But one upside of Tango um, is that if your opponent, I'm sorry, if your uh, strategy is kind of slow and it goes to damage judge, that barrier that you get um, is a lot more valuable than just 100 life because that's prevented damage. Uh, that's going to help you a lot during uh, the damage judge. So if you're like a more stally folder, I think uh, Tango is uh, definitely worth looking into. Then finally, first barrier. I love it a lot personally. Um, it is a very small size, right? It's super, super easy to squeeze in. You start off with a 10 HP barrier. That probably doesn't seem like a lot, but it's really, really great in Falzar version if you want to protect your dust cross and keep digging, digging, digging for more chips. It's one of the best ways to stop like you know, a turn one erase man or a turn one um, time freeze chip from really dealing a lot of damage to you. Um, like I said earlier, if you have your barrier up, it's going to stop your first invis uh, from getting paralyzed by rush, which is super helpful. Um, and yeah, altogether, um, it's pretty annoying to deal with. If your opponent doesn't have a lot of um, attack ups in their Navi customizer to just casually use their buster to break through it, you're probably going to make them use a chip or something out of it or uh, maybe completely nullify a charge attack. So um, it actually ends up saving you quite a bit of HP despite, uh, you know, the small size, which is super cool. And speaking of attack pieces, I would say that um, attack max and attack one, where's our attack one, um, are both going to be uh, extremely good. Um, Obviously, there's a lot to be said about raising your buster value. I think attack max is best in Gregar, where you've got um, your aggressive beast buster that's rapid fire, and um, your charge attacks are very, very powerful and aggressive. It's going to be super helpful, uh, helpful for that. But even just the lowly attack plus one is very, very good. We know the shape is super easy. In fact, I would say attack plus one is so good that it basically makes HP plus 50 not really a thing. You know, the 50 HP that you get from this program is so less impactful compared to an attack plus one that um, you really don't want to be running HP 50 unless you've already got attack max and for whatever reason, you've got um, tiny little squares that you can fill. And even then, I probably wouldn't run HP 50. There are definitely better ways to go. I'll tell you what HP I would run though, 400 and 500. These are both definitely S tier. I will say that every single Navi customizer should absolutely be running at least one of these two, preferably more than one. They're just great. They make sure that you don't die. They're um, a ton of value for the space they give you. Um, and same thing with undershirt. I'm going to throw this in S tier as well. For one spicy little block, you prevent yourself from dying. We all know how good undershirt is. I think it needs absolutely no uh, further fanfare. It is an extremely, extremely, extremely good program, and especially for the size that you get. Now, uh, digging deeper into A tier, I would say that Charge Max is probably going to be up there too. And I think that Charge in general is probably pretty good as well. Um, these are obviously going to help you uh, deal your Charge attacks, which are going to be stronger than just using um, your regular Buster, which I think is really great. Now, interestingly enough, I would say that the speed programs are more in the B tier. You want to build around them. If you ever want to actually use speed, it should be if you're um, bugging your Navi customizer. I'm sorry, if you're bugging your buster. I know we covered that in a previous video, but the more that you bug your uh, buster, um, the more of a chance you have of firing max uh, charge shot damage uh, blast just by using your P shot. So if you have more rapid, you can shoot your buster more and therefore, um, you know, spin the wheel a little bit faster and get um, a higher chance of getting that damage. So I would say that both of these are going to be in the, uh, the B tier. You want to build around it. You don't just want to jam them in, right? S and A, you know, you don't have to think much about it. You're just going to use these programs because they're great. B, you want to be a little bit more, um, you know, uh, mindful of your strategy. And yeah, they have really great payoffs if you do build around them and you make sure that you're doing things correctly. I would say Giga Folder 1 is very similar. Um, Giga Folder 1, not every single, you know, folder is going to need an extra Giga chip. I uh, have talked a lot in previous videos about how much I love Hub Batch. I really love using Giga Folder 1 and Hub Batch together. That, that basically means that this little Giga Folder 1 is going to give you a ton of programs, right? Like, you know, your shield, um, your uh, your custom 1 and 2, your air shoes, your float shoes, all those uh, wonderful things. I think that's a really, really great. Um, Gregor version? Probably is never going to run this, okay? Unless you're, you know, maybe playing in a format that allows uh, the Gregor Giga chip as well. Kernel Force is just, like, way too good. The rest of the Gregor Giga chips are not even close to Kernel Force. Um, so I would say not as uh, as valuable for Gregor. But for Falls, where I think um, there's a lot of good options for Giga Folder, provided that, you know, once again, you build your folder around it. Um, Air Shoes, I would say, is an A tier. Um, very, very helpful for Gregor. You'll find a lot of Gregors running it. Now, not every Gregor needs to run it. In fact... Um, because air shoes can get uninstalled, there are a lot of Gregor players who instead opt out of air shoes, say, you know what, if they use a get in or if they trap me with a magnum, 
I'm just gonna take it um, and rather use that space for more HP because HP does not get uninstalled. Um, that being said, Air Shoes is super, super valuable in the Gregor version. Falzer is probably never gonna run it because you got your beast out and you got Tengu Cross to be able to um, you know, move over those panels. In fact, even Hub Batch, right? <laughs> even even Hub Batch gives you, uh, gives you Air Shoes and Falzer. So you're pretty unlikely to run it there. But in Gregor, it's a very, very good option. Definitely something to consider running, even if you yourself are not running you know, whole related chips in general. Now, further build around me are definitely going to be humor and poem. We've talked a lot about humor uh, in a previous video. That is going to give you that emotion bug, which means there's a good chance that you can just casually get double damage, you know, through spiking anger and full synchro. Um, poem is the exact same thing as, uh, as humor. Most people call it the humor bug, but they're functionally identical in terms of uh, the bug that they give you. And their shape is very similar and the color is obviously different, you know, so it depends on the rest of the pieces you're putting around it. Um, but yeah, th otherwise they're both essentially the same thing and they're both very good if you build around it. I would say the HP 300 is very similar. Um, HP 300 is uh, a wonderful piece because it's got that little corner spot in it. You're not just gonna jam it in every spot because in most cases uh, that little extra you know, little um, panel you're gonna get here is gonna give you 100 extra HP, so 400 is usually better than 300, but sometimes it's uh, you're just in that perfect spot where you can slide in the HP 300, which makes it super, super helpful. Um, and then shield, I think is another solid build around me. Most people forget about the shield. Um, it is very, very solid. You do have to be in regular Mega Man form to be able to do the back B. And obviously back B has kind of some timing issues. You have to get really good at being able to press them at the same time to actually pull up uh, to pull off the shield. But the nice thing is it's a super small program. You get it for free as well um, with Hub Batch, which is kind of cool. Um, and because it's so small, you really only have to pull off the shield to block like one or two attacks for that size uh, to be worth it. I think it's actually not uncommon for a shield to prevent, you know, like a like a 200 damage attack or a 300 damage attack um, if you time it just correctly. So you can get a lot of value out of it. That being said, you do have to build around it because you cannot be in a cross form. Um, so I would say shield and poem slash humor go really well together because these are all programs I'll put them all next to each other. These are all programs um, that are going to want regular baseline Mega Man to be the most effective. Um, I think folder back is, or, sorry, folder pack. <laughs> Imagine if folder back were a thing. We all know that's busted. Um, folder pack is a very, very cool option. This gives you both custom one as well as mega chip plus one. So you can add a sixth mega chip to your draw. Um, the shape is really nice. It's not super big. It's not super awkward. Custom, as we've seen, is amazing. You know, being able to uh, slot in an extra mega chip can be really good. Um, I would say B, once again, um, you know, I don't necessarily know how many folders need to have their sixth mega chip. Maybe if you're like an E code folder and you want to jam, you know, all of your element man chips as well as like an, uh, an elect man SP and like maybe, you know, uh, judge man and erase man as well. Maybe like that would be a good use for it. Um, it's a little bit more fringe in general, I would say. Um, but yeah, still a very viable option if you do B build around it. Now, we get into uh, kind of an interesting territory here with uh, anti-damage. I got bullied into putting this in a C tier. I kind of want to put it in a D tier. Um, the reason why is because uh, the timing for the anti-damage, in fact, actually a quick note for you, uh, many players call this anti-magic just to differentiate it between you know the chip anti-damage and this program. But anyway, that you have a very brief window um, to actually you know have the sort of uh, question mark trap set to throw the shuriken. It's very, very brief, but it does deal damage which is kind of cool. And uh, because it's a shuriken, it'll deal sword damage to stop, you know, a Tengu or something like that. It's not bad. Um, I think shield is just better in most uh, situations and reflect is just awful, you know, in terms of the shape and being able to do things. At least anti-damage, it's, it's like, you know, pretty big and janky, but you know, you can throw it in some, uh, you know, better corner spots. The reflect is just so much worse. And um, yeah, and I guess the reflect, you also have to be right in front of them, right? In order for uh, the damage to, uh, uh, you know, impact them where the anti-damage you know, you can throw that shuriken anywhere, which is kind of cool. But yeah, I would say in general, shield is better. And even then, you know, shield is not necessarily seen all the time, right? Like you do have to build around shield uh, to do as much as you want to do. Um, Mega folder, I'm going to say is uh, in the C tier as well. Same thing as I said with folder pack one. It's just like, it's, it's like nice to have an extra mega chip, but there's just not really like a ton of need for it, in my opinion, um, which is going to basically mean Folder Pack 2, which is Custom 2 and Mega Folder 2, is is in a really similar spot. Um, I'd be really interested to see a build that really does take advantage of Folder Pack 2. I'm sure it can be done. Um, in theory, it's a it's a really powerful option, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's more in the uh, in the C tier than anything else. Um, and now we're starting to get into the really janky stuff. But I guess Mega Folder 2, same thing. You know, you could justify it. 
Now, unfortunately, air shoes is really good. I think float shoes is pretty okay. I'm going to throw float shoes in C, maybe the top of C. I don't know. It's, uh, it's, there's just not that many panels that really like impact you to such a degree. Like ice panels can be a thing, but like slipping is not the worst thing in the world. You know, poison panels are really not much of a thing. And even then, like the one damage you take, you know, every now and then is like not so, so big a deal. Um, I mean, it's, it's a beneficial effect for sure. Uh, and it's really great when you're like, you know, when Falls Are Beast or Hub Batch where you just kind of get it for free. Um, but it's like just a little too fringe. I think Float Shoes probably shines in different formats uh, where maybe other panels have more of an impact. Float Shoes also um, go over mine. You don't uh, affect mine if you have float shoes, which is kind of cool, but uh, mine is also not like a really popular chip that sees a lot of plays. So um, a little bit too fringe for float shoes, but uh, I don't know, keep your eyes on it. Maybe uh, maybe an ice folder really wants it. I don't know, there, there might be some some viable uses for it. Now we started off uh, real strong in the D tier with Reflect, but let me tell you something right now. <laughs> number open, right? <laughs> this is a meme, okay? This is a meme. I love Number Man, I love Higsby. I relate to both of them on a spiritual level. But this is so much space, okay? PvE is one thing. If you want to have 10 ships so that you can S-rank your opponents, uh, you know, your Blast Man or whatever is as fast as possible, that is certainly a thing. But in PvP, you are giving up so much to get those extra chips. And at a certain point, there's diminishing returns, you know? Like, going from 5 chips to 6 chips is pretty amazing. You know, going from 6 to 10 is, like, maybe just a little excessive. So, I don't think it's great. And similarly, Chip Shuffle... Um, way too big for the effect. You only shuffle one time anyway. And then think about this too. To get maximum value out of your shuffle, you need to be selecting the same chips, right? Your, your, um, your folder needs to be, like, have a lot of, like, you know, chip code synergies to actually select them and, and be able to shuffle them away. Um, so it's kind of like a win more in a lot of ways, right? Like, if your folder is already fluid, like, you probably don't really need to shuffle. Program advances are not really great in Battle Network 6, so... There's not a lot to shuffle for. And just look at that space. It is just way too big, way too bulky. Very, very unfortunate. Um, I think body pack is also bad. Uh, you <laughs> get a lot of programs in the body pack, including super armor, which is like notable. Um, but unfortunately, you only save one total block compared to all of um, the other programs that are a part of the body pack. And you have to pay for float shoes, which we just talked about earlier being way too fringe, way too unfortunate. I think if float shoes weren't factored into a body pack, I think you could see a world where this is interesting, but unfortunately it's in D tier. I think body pack is way too big. The float shoes is way too fringe. Um, you'd rather just actually use all of those programs together. Slip runner is interesting. It's on this list because you do get a panel bug if you bug it, which means that there's a chance that uh, leaving a panel cracks your panels. That being said, um, you're probably better off just bugging your air shoes to get a panel glitch because um, you're going to want the air shoes anyway, right? If you're cracking your own panels, it's presumably because um, you have a strategy that can take advantage of holes. So air shoes being bugged gives you the air shoes and it also gives you the panel bug. So it's probably just better in most cases. But Slip Runner's here because it's, uh, I guess, just a really, you know, small space version of being able to do that if for whatever reason you don't want air shoes. Eh, I don't know. There's a world. Um, and I would say HP 100 and 200 are both pretty bad. Um, 50, as we said earlier, you could see a world, right? If you're already maxed out on attack and you, for whatever reason, you've got like a little bit of extra space, you could see a world for HP 50. Um, well, HP 50 is just strictly better than HP 100 because, you know, two of these is the same thing as that. I mean, I guess maybe the colors could matter, you know, or maybe only being one program could matter if you're worried about your HP bugs. But yeah, it's just bad. HP 50 is already like not really great. And so therefore 100 is going to be just a little bit jankier. 200 is okay. In fact, 200 is probably the best of all these because you do uh, get a little bit of HP value from it. Um, but think about how much better HP 300 is. For only one extra block, you get 100 extra HP. And this block right here can be thrown in a corner while well, this one can't. Because if you weren't worried about it being able to be thrown in a corner, you'd be running HP 400, right? So there's a lot of, uh, you know, interesting uh, dynamics at play when it comes to 200s. Um, but yeah, that's just uh, a lot worse. Buster Pack, here's a hot take. I think it's bad. Maybe it's up here, but I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think Buster Pack is really viable. The reason why is because, first of all, you have to actually put it on your command line, which is a lot worse than attack max or charge max or speed max. Um, you know, being able to be put off of the line. It's a lot worse than that. And the other thing, too, is if you're actually... How do I say this? Um, 
attack and charge go well together, right? Because, um, you know, obviously you're charging up faster and then uh, the charge attack will deal more damage for the attack to matter. Like, so those kind of go well together. Attack and speed go well together, right? Because the more you're firing, trying to get your buster glitch, you know, um, the faster that you can actually take the shots and then the more damage it will actually deal. But um, rapid and charge don't really go together. They're not really much of a combo in uh, the exact same spot, right? If you're trying to build around using your buster better, um, it's not really a thing. So you're giving up some space and some equity um, for basically no reason. I would almost rather use attack max and charge max separately or attack max and speed max separately than ever throw in buster pack. And like I said too, you do have to put it on the command line, which is pretty different than the other parts. Then auto heal is absolutely unusable. Um, yeah, so there you go, gang. That was uh, my very, very not so brief tier list that we're talking about for the Navi Customizer. Gang, I've got a really exciting video coming up really, really soon about defensive chips and tempo. Um, gang, please get excited for the Proto Cup. It is happening this weekend. We got bigger prizes than ever. We've got all sorts of fun things to talk about soon. I can't wait to see you there. I hope this video was very helpful. Do let us know in the comments if you have any maybe disputes over a certain spot that I put these Navi Customizer programs in, or if you just want to let us know what other videos uh, to do in general. We're always very helpful and receptive. I certainly appreciate it, Scouts, and I'll see you soon.